What's up, folks? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Policy Genius. Look, it's May. Things are booming, blooming, and booming. The economy is booming, and flowers are blooming. Why not see if your home and auto insurance savings can bloom as well? We're almost halfway through with 2021, and you can head into June with one less thing to worry about. See if you're overpaying for home and auto insurance. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare home and auto insurance in one place. They can help you find a home and auto coverage similar to what you have now, but at a lower price. They've saved shoppers up to $1,055 per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. Their team will handle the paperwork to set up your new policy or switch over from your current one. Getting started is really easy. Just go to policygenius.com and answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Property. Then Policy Genius takes it from there. They'll compare rates from America's top insurers from Progressive to Allstate to find your lowest quotes. Then Policy Genius team can look for ways to save you more, including bundling your home and auto policies. If they find a better rate than what you're paying now, they'll switch you over for free. Their top notch service has earned Policy Genius a five star rating across thousands of reviews on Trustpilot and Google. Head to policygenius.com to get started right now now because when it comes to insurance it's nice to get it right policygenius.com we are also brought to you by my favorite purveyors of the finest in the fine art of Kenja. Tradecraft Farms, my people, at Tradecraft Farms on Instagram. They ditched their underscore that they had for a while. Whether it's edibles, smokables, vapables, uh, uh, new aerosols, which are really, really interesting if you ask me, uh, Tradecraft Farms has got it. If you're in the Southern California area, stop in their Port Wainimi location. If not, give them a follow on Instagram and remember that name for when you come to town. I've seen a lot of folks over on their Instagram saying, the smoking tire sent me. I I like when you guys do that. Go over to their gram and say, hey, the smoking tire sent me here. That is very, very kind of you, and I really appreciate that. Uh, this is the, the coolest sponsor I've ever gotten to read, and so uh, we really want to keep them around as long as possible. So uh, the best THC and CBD-based products uh, directly from the heart of Los Angeles, 100% legal. Tradecraft Farms is where it's at, and we love talking about them on this here show. All right, on this episode of the podcast, Brad Brownell is in the studio. This dude has a resume that is so long right now. His CV is like the credits of a Star Wars film. It's like he's got flatsixes.com, he's got Jalopnik, he's got Radwood, Rad for Sale, he's doing this Autotopia 2099 EV show, he's doing, uh, there's more, I don't even really, can't even really remember what else, but he has his sticky fingers in many pies. If he was in a Guy Ritchie movie, I would say that as Jason Statham in a proper accent. But he's late to the show because his Porsche 912, which he drove all the way down from Reno, broke down on the side of the road. This dude like drives and motorcycles himself all over the West Coast to go to these press launches. I don't understand why he does that. He certainly doesn't have to, but he is a G and uh, a true road tripper. Brad Brownell of... Uh, everywhere on the Smoke Tire podcast. Is that the Gunther Works thing? Yeah. yeah. But what's really fun about it is that I could probably take it to the fucking drum circle yeah, in Venice tonight yeah, when yeah, I get yeah. home. Yeah. You know what they've time. been doing? They have they brought back the um the sound bath on the what's beach. That? That's basically where a bunch of people lay down. Okay. <laughs> and someone plays like a gong. Okay. You know, and other like um <clears throat> what, what family of instruments are gong and cymbals in? Is that just all cymbals? Percussion? Right, yeah. but specifically ones made of like copper metal. and metal okay. and like yeah, sim- re- reverb yeah. based, like yeah. right. So it's all the symbol well, family. They have the sound bowls too that you just like right. move the oh, wand. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, they have those too. They have the bowl, and then they have the, the gong, and then there's like something that resembles a steel drum, but it mm-hmm. doesn't sound like you're in the Caribbean. It mm-hmm. sounds like something else. Have you ever been to uh, Wisdom? I've just started seeing Dude. shit about this place. I visited, so I... That's I, like a dome sound bath, yeah, right? Yeah, I visited the place because I thought it was going to be bigger for, like, car space. Uh-huh. 
And we went down there yesterday, and they were like, let me just show you what this oh, thing is. you visited yesterday? Yeah. Oh, how appropriate that we're talking about sound baths today. <laughs> let me show you. Get just, a picture of this place, Zach. Amazing. The Wiz Dome. It's kind of wild looking. And it completely fucks with your head. <laughs> Like they're just, just like, like the scale of shit, or you, you, you walk mean? in and they you lay down on like a reclining chair, uh-huh. and you look up at the dome and they project like three dimensional art, and then they just play like trippy music. So this is the next evolution of the Pink Floyd yes. laser light. Yeah, show. yeah, yeah. Right, but it I, it completely messes Which with was your good, by the way back in the day your brain's about. like uh, stability center because mm. you don't know what direction is up. Oh yeah. So like the the thing is like coming at you, and then all of a sudden you're like this flying. Is not VR. It. It's VR, or not no, VR. Okay, not yeah, VR. Okay. It's all just projected up on the dome, but it's like crystal clear because everything's wow. dark in there. And, I mean, and, and, uh, cool. and when are the shows? And how much is admission? Ooh, wow. I, <laughs> I don't know when they're coming back. But Wait, dome oh, park? Are there multiple yeah. domes? Yeah, there's, there's six the, six domes. Holy shit! I didn't know about this. Yeah. This seems awesome. Yeah. Fuck me. Where yeah, is this place? Yeah, there Five domes. There it is. Where is that? Downtown? Uh, downtown. Get the it's fuck the out arts, of here. It's the Arts District. I gotta it's check that out. They, they set it up cool. a lot or something like that. <laughs> That's yeah. not what I was it's thinking permanent. of. Oh, it's, it's permanent? It's permanent. It's there forever, yeah. What's it's the been... one in Palm Springs? That This is oh, like... I don't know. This, you know, there's one in Palm Springs that was the coca leaf, and this is the cocaine. <laughs> there's like one yeah. in Palm Springs. Yeah. That, Google like Palm Springs sound bath dome. There's one in Palm Springs that is an old school dome that was oh, built okay. in like the 80s yeah. by some hippies. And they, yeah, there it is. The sound bath, sound bath dome. Oh, Landers. Wow. It's called the sound bath. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's the, I think maybe the first ever sound be. bath. And that's what I thought you were talking about. And oh, by the way, that would be fun as fuck for yeah. her. That would be a cool, maybe this will work out for a car. <laughs> yeah. <event>. yeah. <laughs> But no, yours seems like I want to do that with Hannah. That seems yeah. fun. Yeah, that's, it. it uh, unfortunately, it's too small to do anything car related. But it it looked wicked. But date night? Yeah, date totally, night. Totally for sure. date night. All right, cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's awesome. That was one of the things I'm down here for is to scout venues for a uh, car show at the end of the year. That's cool. What else to find? Anything good? Uh, yeah, we Does it have I to think, be secret, or can we talk? No, about it? I think it's it's pretty cool. Um, I went to a place that was a, a nursery, so it was going to be like very plant themed and like oh. warehousey and stuff like that. Thought that'd be cool. And if then, it was a nursery, is there anything plant related that's like left? Hmm. Or is it just an empty warehouse? No, there was tons of plants. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, there oh, was cool. plants in the ground. There was plants. Yeah, it was, okay, cool. it was very cool. Um, they ended up wanting a lot of money because it was down like Skid Row, which you would think would be cheap, but it's really not. <laughs> and, <laughs> like everywhere else in LA. Right, right. Yeah. And then know, I, I don't understand. These houses, they're all a thousand square feet and they're ugly. Why, <laughs> right. Why is, is everything $1.3 million? I don't understand. <laughs> um, and then the venue that I think that I'm going to book, uh, he's going to give me a quote uh, next week, is uh, a movie studio. Oh yeah, so it's a it's a small scale movie studio, but they have like indoor filming and they have outdoor filming and they have four parking lots and cool, very cool space. Is it for Radwood? Uh, no, it's for Autopia. Oh yes, this I'm, is the I'm starting an electric car show, which is cool. Yeah, I'm about that. Yeah, and it's gonna be you know very uh, early Luftgekult kind of vibes where it's very like low key. The first Luft was f- in days. Yeah, thirty five cars one? or something. No. I think it was. I think it was maybe eleven or twelve cars. Okay. Deus is tiny. Yeah, yeah. The entire Deus lot is maybe, maybe six thousand square feet. Yeah, the whole lot. Yeah, yeah, it's tiny. And there's thirty five hundred of it is a restaurant, right? Or store on it. Right. Yeah. Is it okay that there's like six other businesses named Autopia? Uh, is it? It's Autopia twenty ninety nine. Okay. Just, com. just check in for there you. you. Go. Okay. Uh, yeah, we. There's a place in L- in Burbank that's a car storage place called Autopia. <laughs> Or is that auto? That's Autotopia. Excuse me. Yeah, that's uh, it. Right there. Autopia twenty ninety nine. Yep. Oh, I like your I like your uh, Epcot Center exactly. graphics. You've got it right 100%. there. One hundred percent. There you go. What was your Epcot Center ride? Did you? I mean, other than Space Mountain, which is the obvious. I like the yeah. Wedway People Mover, which was some like just little train ride through the it future. It has been twenty years since I. I have no idea. <laughs> I went. I never even been to Disneyland. I've only been to the World. I don't know which one's which. World is Florida. Okay. Land is Anaheim. Okay. I've. I've only been to the Florida one. Yeah. yeah. I've only been to the Florida one. Yeah, they're probably the same. One has flies. You know, one has <laughs> mosquito. It's like this, you know, one has alligators. Yeah, alligators. You know. Don't go in the water. <laughs> yeah. You'll be fine. Um, I thought the hotels were the coolest part of because the hotels were like that were pretty futuristic with the monorail yeah. shit and all that. Mm-hmm. The hotels were like real interesting. My family always did like the, the lower middle class way where you get the uh, um, timeshare. 
Oh yeah. And you're, you're like you go to the timeshare and they pitch you on it. Oh, you for straight like, up did for that? like three hours. Oh my god! And then you say no, and they give you the tickets anyway. You've <laughs> got to say no seven times. Yeah. I went to one of those. Yeah. I was just listening to this podcast. You know, California City. Obviously, you know California yeah. City. Yeah, the yeah. city. I was there. Yeah. You know the story of California City? No, it's a Holy fucking shit. insane multi-level marketing scheme, no and it's kind of always been. It's been like waves of this multi-level marketing. I was scheme. there last week. It's it's for wild, the early isn't thing. it? Yeah. Oh, is yeah. that where it was? Yeah. Yeah, it's because it's just, it's like the wild frontier, like crazy town. The mayor was there at the Harley thing. <laughs> of course he was. And, and they were like pitching us on how it was going to be like the next weed capital. They Bro, did? Don't, it's still going. Yo, oh my do, God. listen, don't give them any money. <laughs> not buy any property. Listen to this podcast. And call, it's just called California City. Okay. And on your okay. ride, on your drive back to, it's like, a, it's like six one hour things. Okay. It's basically the length of you to drive all the way yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to them. Don't okay. do not give those people a dime. Seriously, yeah, it's amazing. It's a really well That's done funny. show. If you have no idea what we're talking about, a guy named uh, Nathan Mendelson tried to start the city of tomorrow in the middle of the goddamn desert, saying it would be the next Palm Springs or the next. You know, L Los Angeles was a desert once too. Yep. You know, Phoenix yeah, was a desert once too. Salt Lake City was a you know whatever blah, blah blah. Yeah, and he basically. Convinced people to move there. I mean, it's real. It's a real crazy wow. MLM type of scheme that is ongoing to to, to today in a, a, in dip with similar players and crazy ways and like it's a great place to do adventure motorcycling. Yeah. It's, a it's lot great. Of nothing. It's great. Imagine an no enormous planned city that nobody ever moved to. Yeah. Wild stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But you were um, riding that Harley. Yes. The Pan, Pan America or Pan, Pan Americana? America. Pan America 1250, which yep. looks like possibly the most exciting Harley Davidson it's to really me good. in quite some time. It's really good. I, I loved the live wire. I still love the live wire. Um, but the the Pan America is very, very good. I saw my very first customer live wire last week at really? Cars and Coffee. Oh, my, cool. The very first one I've seen outside of a journalist riding one. Okay. It's a it's rad looking. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah, uh, but this Pan America thing, I mean, wow, that's an adventure motorcycle that looks yeah. really really good. Yeah, it's like it's on par with um, like a BMW or a Ducati or that's a awesome. KTM or whatever for a little bit less money. So it's like between um, like a Honda and a Ducati, it cuts the difference. I mean, that's pretty awesome on price. That sounds good. Yeah, is the engine. A it's refined really yeah, yeah. engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's Does a, it feel like a modern motorcycle? Yeah. Okay. Dual overhead cams. Uh, oh, it has VVT, dual cams. Oh, really? Water cooled. Oh. Yeah. Oh, they're doing this now. It's a brand new motor. I thought yeah. it was like I thought it was like Harley's customers were like, "Can you make all of the bikes <laughs> feel like they're from 1966?" So the the way that they they described it, it's actually got like three balancers inside it to keep the vibrations down. Uh huh. And the way like they a described GT 350. it, yeah. <laughs> They they described it like uh, uh, it's only the only vibrations we let out are to let you know it's alive. <laughs> it's like okay, all right, like noise canceling headphones. Well, that's okay. I mean, I rode that Multistrada V4S thing like a couple uh, I rode weeks the ago. Previous generation, the twelve sixty. Dude, this thing was fucking badass. Yeah, it got it, it got real spoiled. That quick shifter spoiled the shit out of so me. So this doesn't offer quick shift. It do, there are things that the Ducati offers that this doesn't. Mm -hmm. Um, on an adventure bike, I don't think I could go without quick shift, but I'll still but I'll still have a go. It's got some stuff that nobody else has. What's that? It's got uh, what do they call it? ALH, uh, advanced or ARH, advanced ride height uh -huh. or something like that. And it oh, literally, as you come to height a stop, adjustable. As you come to a stop, it lowers. Oh, oh so you can put your feet yeah, down. So you can put your feet down. Get Whoa. the fuck out yeah. of here! It's wicked. How long is the warranty? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's cool. Um, but can that's, you? Is there like on-road mode, off-road yeah. mode, and that oh, adjusts yeah. the height as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, that's kind of crazy. Uh, is that the first motorcycle to ever have a height yeah. adjustable suspension on the fly like that? Yeah. Is it air? Uh, I think it's hydraulic. No, it must be air. It must be air. It's gotta be, so does that mean? Do you air. think it has a compressor on it? It it uh, compresses when you move it. Oh, so shit. it like as you're sitting there, you're yeah. rocking back and forth or whatever. Uh -huh. It'll kind of lift, and then like you take off, and it'll kind of like move around a bit, and That's it sort of pumps wild. up. It pumps up on its own, and then as you're coming, as you come to a slow stop, it just kind of goes. 
that's and it lowers cool. one to two inches depending on what and you're, then your feet are just chilling yeah. and yeah. then you just go yeah. that's cool as yeah. fuck and it has remember that weird three wheeled Piaggio yes, thing with the and two had, front wheels. Yeah, yeah, and it had a button on it that would lock, lock it. So yeah. you'd come up to a thing and you just hit the button and it would just lock it. And then when you hit the throttle, it would unlock. Yeah, and you just didn't have to put your feet down. It was yeah. cool. It was yeah, just a yeah. nice thing. Yeah, um, it has advanced ride mode. So you've got rain mode, street mode, uh, uh, sport mode. Does it adjust the power levels or just yeah. the response? Well, yeah, it's response. Yeah. yeah. Because the so. Ducati will do like uh, in enduro mode mm. or city mode, it's like 115 horsepower, right. and then on like tour or sport, it's 170. Right. I preferred it on the fucking softer. Yeah. No, I liked it in tour. I liked yeah. the full power, but a little bit softer on the mm. throttle. I was. I'm not a MotoGP like throttler. <laughs> you know, I don't have that. We These did pictures some, look awesome of this thing pretty, mobbing in the dirt. We did some pretty wicked off road stuff. We took a. It was the reason we were out in California City is because there's an advanced riding school out there, dirt riding. Oh wow! Um, mm-hmm. So we did a full day of drills, just learning how to ride off road. Did cool. you fall? I didn't. You didn't? I didn't. Really? Good I, for you. But, but last the week before that, I went on a two day camping trip with yeah. a, with a zero. Uh huh. Really? Yeah. Would you Would you charge it with? Uh, it was. It has 150 miles of range, oh, okay. so you just right. go off road 100. You know, 70 miles got and it, 70 got miles it. back. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, we we did a two day like camping overnight out in the desert in Nevada. And I fell a lot on that. <laughs> really? <laughs> a ton. I want to, it seems so appealing to ride motorcycles off-road, but I've had two back surgeries, and I'm yeah. so afraid of falling. Yeah. Like, I just fuck myself up. I, I don't know if I could do it. If you if the terrain isn't too bad, like if it's sandy, yeah. you fall in it. I mean, you're falling at like two miles an hour, so yeah, it's, I know. Not, yeah. it's not too bad. I didn't hurt. I didn't have any, like, bruises or anything, but. I'm just um, a bitch. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> You know uh, what you need? You need a Sprinter 2500 4x4. With that, yeah, that right. Seat. Yeah, the, oh. the air seat. It doesn't have air seat, but it has the uh, most comfortable seat I've ever had in a van. Okay. It rules. Nice. Um, how much is that bike? Between Honda and Ducati is what, like 20 grand? Uh, it starts at 17500 or something like that. Cool. So, And you can, I think top of the line is like 22. That's like, pretty cool. Like fully maxed out. If you 22. didn't ever want to go off-road with it, is it still a good motorcycle? If it was yeah. just on road, yeah. I yeah. mean, I would ride but it all why day. Why would you buy an adventure bike if you didn't want to take it off road? Like, because off-road. people do that all the time. I know GSs. But like, no, but I mean, I'd road. buy a GS or a or a, a multi strata if I was doing, if I had a long commute, like a thirty yeah. or forty mile commute year yeah, round. Yeah, be good for that. Are they hundred percent? Are, are they more comfortable that? than street oriented options? I guess is my question. Like, does Harley or Ducati make something that? Oh, Harley definitely does. That's yeah, Harley, Harley do. definitely. Big, yeah. big Harleys are super comfy. That's a couch on the motor on the you know highway. But um, I mean, if you're if you want to be ride sporty and look hard, you know, you put the big metal bags on the back <laughs> and you you wear your uh, reflective vest and you know. I like I just helmet. like the upright riding position. Yeah, it's like yeah. a tall person yeah. who likes to sit upright. Sure, like it's a, such a nice option for like. You know, when I had that multi I was too, I like I put more miles on in a day than I've ever put in a yeah. single motorcycle. It was great. I think um, these on the road are are soft. They're, they're softer sprung. I mean, they sit taller and stuff. So hmm. you're probably going to have a little more comfort on the long run on one of these than like like I took last year. I took a, a Diavel. Oh yeah, across the country. Th- that seems aggressive. Like that's a lovely motorcycle. Yeah. Is that what you want to do with that motorcycle? No. I mean, <laughs> it was fine. It was yeah. it, it was comfy. I didn't have a problem with it. It's just a lot of miles every day. Does do you did you do you enjoy that those type of mi- that kind of miles after day after day after day on a motorcycle? I enjoy putting myself in scenarios where I hate myself. You do. <laughs> There's a couple of these writers that are real gluttons for fucking punishment. Yeah. Bowman, Bowman. Yeah. Bowman yeah, is yeah. that comes to mind. He yeah. was like car, the car martyr. Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> Let's drive a lunchbox across Alaska. Yeah. And and occasionally Sam Smith will go into that story. He'll have a, he'll have a real bad idea <laughs> that he'll follow through on, but So, you seem to take a lot of really uncomfortable <laughs> 
trips. Yeah. The way, that, <laughs> yeah. the way that I describe it to people that people sort of understand is I'm the kid from the Midwest that wore shorts in January and was like, it's not cold. <laughs> That's so funny. So I, I did a short sleeves through a lot of the winter in Connecticut. Yeah. I had the North Face vest, but I would keep, okay. keep the short sleeves. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's like a good the, look. <laughs> I uh, Did you see me in the elevator? Yeah. Me I didn't, but I've seen the picture. The picture of me in the elevator is I'm Smash Mouth mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and then I'm Greenwich here, <laughs> and then below the waist, I'm like somewhere between Rage Against the Machine and Nine Inch Nails. Did you have a wallet chain? At a, uh, for a time, oh, I definitely. did. Yeah, yeah, for a time, I did. Sure. And even after, I, I got rid of the wallet chain after a while, but uh, some of those friends from back then, they still have still wallet have chains. Wallet chains. <laughs> nice. This might be the same wallet chain. I never had a wallet chain. I never did the you chain. You know, it... I always actually, after about a month with a wallet chain, I was like, first off, this fucking thing keeps hitting my car, and that's driving me nuts. <laughs> Second of all, it seems like a roadmap to where your wallet is. Yeah. And if you really want, you just, all you got to do is yank on the chain. It, mm -hmm. it wasn't like secure. Yeah. It, and I was just like, that. this seems kind of dumb. Yeah. I didn't, I never got with wearing a lot of metal. Mm-hmm. But I did have, did you ever, were you Doc Martens ever? Did you ever go that route? Yeah, a little bit. How many holes? Uh, I don't know. Do you remember? I, had, I, I got up to about 18 holes. Oh, like which, the tall ones. Yeah, which, oh, which no. takes you to about, about here. I could never... That's I the Dita Von Teese model. I, <laughs> <laughs> I could never do that much. I, I think I did like the low tops. The regular yeah, ones. Regular yeah, regular yeah, ones. Yeah. Those, they're the best ones, yeah. really, in hindsight. Um, <laughs> no, I was... Uh, I, in high school, I was more the uh, hemp and leather guy. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Like the natural leather. Yeah. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. The, like, the cuff. Yes. Leather cuff. <laughs> The cuff. Yeah. Yeah. The cuffs are kind of... So I've seen some cuffs coming back. People are trying to make mm -hmm. the bun strap happen mm -hmm. again, and I'm mm -hmm. just like, oh, dude. Mm -hmm. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was a Quentin Tarantino <laughs> movie, and you're not Brad Pitt. Come on. <laughs> it's like, you know, that's a Nazi thing, right? Uh, you know, yeah. That's like a Luftwaffe thing, you know? So Maybe it's avoid it that. Um, but... Uh, I did really enjoy speaking of motorcycles. I saw you in Palm Springs for the for the Moto Guzzi V7 thing. I thought that was a fun little bike. I enjoyed it. It was that. fun. Yeah, it was yeah. good. And that drive route was a good time too. You had the, actually the same exact bike I did. The blue you rode the day after I did. Yeah. Yeah. The blue the blue yeah. classic. Yeah. I think good. they ride exactly the same. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. It was nice. I like those those uh, those little like V twin bikes and like the 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 Royal Enfield, which is mm -hmm. a, a parallel, not a V, but right. they make these sort of spitty sounds yeah. that I really find appealing. Yeah, They're just yeah. kind of a very throwback. Old yeah, it's yeah. very fun. Yeah. And you don't like have to zing them to 12,000 right. RPM to like go. Yeah, like they're that. fun, torquey, they're cheap. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the, the Guzzi, it was like nine grand or something. Yeah. Like that's pretty affordable. For a European motorcycle, yeah. that's pretty cheap. Yeah. yeah. Hand-built Italian, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For a, it's like, and really built in Italy. Yeah. Because like if you want, like, you know, on. a cheap Ducati, it is built not in Italy. Right. Is it Philippines? Where's the I scrambler think, built? I think India. India, is it, or India? Is it mal possibly Malaysia? Malaysia? Maybe it's Malaysia. I think it's Malaysia. It's definitely not Italy. Yeah. But if you get the Scrambler with the bigger motor, I think it's called Scrambler Pro, mm. that one is built in Italy. Okay. The 1100 or whatever, which I really want to get. They got repoed and sent, not repoed, but it got taken out of the press fleet and sent mm. to like a movie mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. like, God damn it, Tom Cruise. <laughs> Fuck. They, <laughs> I'm actually going to uh, San Francisco on Monday to ride the new uh, Monster. Oh, awesome. They yeah. invited me to that one, but I couldn't go because, oh, because uh, I'm doing uh, f I'm doing GT3 for a road and track print, oh. which means I get four more days with oh my the GT3. God. I'm right. like, clear the calendar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's probably worth it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it was that, that one took precedence. More that I had to do the gig mm -hmm. and... Um, but I but I talked to Jordan and I'm gonna get on the new mon look at the new monster. That is an uh, looking bike. The yeah. new monster wow. looks nasty, doesn't yeah. it? Wow. They got rid of the trellis frame, so it lost some of its like signature look. Mm -hmm. But I, from everything it that I've like heard, it looks like it doesn't even better. have a frame. Yeah, They've hidden the entire frame. It's just like a motor in a case yeah. floating. Yeah. It, it looks cool. a lot more like a race replica that you just changed the headlight now. Yeah, like you street fired it instead yeah. of being a little bit different in shape like mm -hmm. it used to. Are they gonna, wow. are they discontinuing the Street Fighter? Are they merging them into one model? No, because this looks an awful lot like no, the Street Fighter. No, that's a that's a lot more power and a. That's much, the V four. Yeah, it's the V four. Yeah, it's the yeah. V four. That's a good point. And uh, oh, that's fucking cool looking. 
The it Street Fighter is basically a uh, naked, um, whatever the Panigale. Panigale, right? Yeah. yeah. They actually offered me that one, and I was like, um, I'm a little scared, and I think yeah. maybe not. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. What the, I'm excited for the new monster. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. It'll be fun. But God And damn, I will man. see you on TLX Type S, too. Oh, at Laguna? Yeah. I think I'm that'll not, be fun. I mean, Laguna Sega is always fun, and it'll fun to I mean, be it, fun to be in Monterey it's for a, a second. Four hundred horsepower sedan, like it's got to be pretty good. It'll be all right. Yeah. I'm sort of like jaded. No, but I'm just like, am I really? <laughs> yeah, am I really going to get on a plane to drive a, a, an Acura? And I'm, I was second guess. I'm gonna go. Um, yeah. yeah, but I'm, I'm, uh, I was second guessing it for like a minute. Mm. I was just like, oh, am I? Re-? But yes, I am gonna go. I think if it's it was Laguna a, Seca, of course. If it was a go. TLX, a, like a regular TLX, that'd be like, but eh, it's the Type S. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> V6 twin turbo. Like, it'll be good. Be, that'll be fun. It'll be good. It'll I'm be sure. Fast. It'll be very fast. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. And and it's a, you know, get you out of the house. It's for gotta a be. It's gotta be better than like the Q60 Red Sport, right? I haven't driven that, so oh, okay. pro- I mean, probably. I didn't like the steering in that. It was very soft Isn't that the steer- super steer-by-wire? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Yep. Did you anything good recently? I haven't really been driving anything. I've been riding a bunch of bikes. motorcycles, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Tycon was oh, yeah. pretty great. That was a good time. I you drove. Oh, we drove the turbo. You yeah, had the, had the what four. a four and what base and, four and still yeah. super fast yeah, and super awesome. Four hundred and seventy right? horsepower. Yeah, like, not slow. Not slow. Pretty good. Four something to sixty. What's your fine. What's your verdict on plastic or versus painted body cladding? I mean, I'd rather have it low and no cladding at all. But yeah, well. but yeah, I. It, I mean, I drive a Tour X, so mm-hmm. the, it's it's basically a You've faster. Your side. It's basically a faster, more comfortable, uh, sportier, better steering Tour X. There you go, <laughs> With, on electric. That car is so good. It's really good. It's so fucking. In funny. my review, I said, you know, I might be biased because I own four Porsches and a Buick Tour X. <laughs> But this is the best car that's ever been made. If you add up made. the power of all four of your <laughs> right. Porsches and still put less. it into the body still of the Tour X, it's still. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to add the power from the Tour X plus all four of my Porsches to equal that one. The Tour X is kind it, of fun. Really. It's a good looking car. If they put I like, a different badge I like on the front, it. I think they would have sold more. I really do. I think if they had marketed it at all, <laughs> at all, right. they would have sold more. They did. They sent out leaflets. Yeah. Here's yeah. A, yeah. To the, guys, to here's the demographics. Thing. Yeah. It's, a, it's a wagon. We Liter- make it. Literally, their entire marketing p- campaign for that era of Buick was, Buick, we don't look like Buick anymore. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what's that? Yeah. It's a Buick. Oh. Yeah. It's, got this, it's got a Buick grill. That's huh. a Buick? Come on. <laughs> they just park them at Denny's at 4 p.m. <laughs> to get that early bird special crowd coming in. Yeah. No, I, I really love mine. We've, yeah, it's uh, good looking. We've taken it across the country a couple times. Um, it's really my wife's car, but neither of us are commuting anymore right now, so it kind of just sits around. Remember when Buick brought back the, like, was it Grand, or the Regal GS? Mm-hmm. And I was I drove that thing, and I was like, this would be a fabulous Saab 9.3. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was that was pretty much yeah. what they were building. I mean, it was time. an Opal. Yeah, yeah. It was a fast Opal. Yeah, so, a decent car actually. Yeah, I mean, it's good build quality. It's good German engineering. The fucking the badge just looks so old, mm-hmm. and it just it, yeah the Regal GS. That mm-hmm. was a pretty nice car actually for yeah. what it was. Yeah, I like my Buick. I, I mean, like, I like my Opal. <laughs> It's a good Opal. My mom, uh, my grandma had the uh, Cadillac Catera, which was also yeah. an Opal. Caddy the Ziggs? Yes. Mm-hmm. It, hers didn't zig very no. much. That fucking thing. It broke down a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I mean, I would put my Tour X up against like a entry-level 3 Series wagon or something like that. It's it Or 5 Series wagon. It's probably bigger. Yeah. A customer of mine just got a new Outback, and I was like, it was fucking... The seats are like real good in it. Mm-hmm. It's a big car now, obviously. Pretty it's much grown, everything's but, good these days. Uh, I mean, most most things are. Yeah, there's a couple things we've driven that were like under. Well, actually, what have we driven recently that was not great? Underwhelming, less than whelming. That Cadillac a couple months ago, but that was like five or six months ago at this point. Which Cadillac? I the CT5 V. Oh, that's a bummer. It was no bueno, but it was like the all-wheel drive one. Apparently, oh and yeah, like, uh, yeah. If I had the rear drive one, that would have been a different story. But in the well, mean, they know meanwhile, I've it seen. To. I know that's dumb. <laughs> meanwhile, I've seen zero on the road. Right, n- right. literally zero. Yeah, um, that's a bummer. Yeah, but most things today are pretty quick. 
you know, stop well, have enough mm-hmm. tech, like all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Corolla. Corolla was twenty five grand and it had like radar crews, yeah. comfy seats. Yeah. Radar all this crews for twenty five K is where we're at yes. now. Yeah. I like that life. Great. That's very good. That used to be like hundred thousand dollar S class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty twelve ish. There's a uh we've got a Cayenne Turbo downstairs from okay. 04 with very low miles uh-huh. that has the earliest uh, keyless entry and keyless start say oh. system that I've ever seen. It's really, really interesting well, system. Well, Porsche's keyless start, you had to like leave it a was fob a, yeah. in the key thing. It has a whole module. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy. That's weird. Yeah. Um, what's up with uh, Radwood San Francisco? Is happening? Yeah, how exciting! Uh, it's very exciting. I actually have some. I I look at your notes. I have some stuff to break, so I've got to have notes here, so okay, I get my dates got? right. What do we got? Uh, we've got uh, San Mateo is Nor- NorCal. Yeah, so it'll be San Mateo Event Center on July 10th. Nice. Uh, which is our first show back since March of 20. We did a show in Texas, and it was like the week before lockdown. Oh yeah, it was gnarly. Uh, even while we were there, was it we're a super like super spreader event. As far as we can tell, it wasn't. <laughs> it was outside, and it was like at the time when they locked down Texas. I think there was like twenty five cases in the U S. or uh-huh. something like that. It was just like we know it's coming here, so we yeah, got to prepare. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it was very like it was all outdoors. But uh, there was a ton of people. Yeah. And so, then, starter jackets kill the virus. Yeah, right, 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 right. The windbreaker. <laughs> yeah. everyone, everybody zinc. Zinc on everything. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're hopeful that that didn't happen. We don't know. Um, there was no follow-up on from the CDC. If so, uh, my attorney out. can be consulted <laughs> at... Yeah, uh, right, right. <laughs> if there was no headline... Right, exactly, later. yeah. yeah. Like a, le- a week later, Texas was like, hey, uh, we're going to limit events to like 150 people. And we were like, oh, our event was like 4,000. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, we didn't know any better back then. Yeah, yeah of it was course, like, no. And then it, we, as, N- like, as soon as Texas locked down and as soon as the NBA did their thing, we were like, oh, the two events that we have planned, we have to just shut them mm. down. So uh, we were pretty early acting and... Uh, we still have some people that h- held on to their tickets. Nice. So those are th- forever eligible. If they come to any show ever, they're welcome <laughs> to, to bring those tickets. Um, but San Mateo, that'll be our first event back. And then uh, I have a heaven on good authority that will be in Austin, Texas, and somewhere in the Midwest, either Chicago or Detroit. Uh, somewhere through the year, we're still looking for a venue, still looking for a date. Uh, but hopefully that'll be late summer, early fall. And then September 19th will be Pacific Northwest. Oh, uh, nice. At Dirtfish. Ooh. Oh, yeah. that's a good idea. They have a Group B collection there. Yeah, they that'll do. That'll be like the center stone of the... That's fucking a good idea. Yeah. That's cool. And then... That'll be nice in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll be back in LA. We're actually moving our show up to November this year. Um, November 19th in SoCal. Do you know where yet? No. Oh, that's what you're doing. You're looking for spots. Oh, that's for the other. That's for the other show. Uh, We 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 have a an idea that it'll probably be at a hangar. Uh huh. So okay. Don't know which one yet. There are around. There are there are a few around. There's options. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's fun. Uh, and then we will, if you're in um, the Northeast uh, Greenwich Concourse. Oh. We're going to have a class. The Radwood class? Yeah. Oh, fun. So that's October 3rd. Greenwich Concours is a nice event. Yeah. Um, there'll maybe, be about I'll, maybe I'll go to New York for that one. There'll be maybe about 50 cars. My parents live in Greenwich, so okay. maybe I'll, I'll come have a do a thing or something. Cool. That could be Enter fun. Enter one of your cars. <laughs> I gotta, I'd have to ship it there. I don't yeah. have anything appropriate on the... Vanquish is too new. That doesn't really work. Mm. Well, if we could find... I could find something. But but uh, but it would be a fun time. I Lamborghini like, road trip I like time. that. Right. Um, Stressful road trip. Yeah. Is it Josh. still down on the water? I don't know. I've okay. never been. Oh, it's nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have um, restaurant recommendations for you, too. Autopia is probably going to be the first weekend of December, the traditional Radwood time. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, December 4th, Los Angeles, hopefully by LAX, so you can fly in, you know. And then um, tickets hopefully will be on sale next week. Sweet. So if I can lock down the venue, if it's uh, the same weekend that we traditionally would have the Radwood, then right. we should have to we have to have the pre yeah. pre Autopia party, I suppose. Yeah, it might be transitionary. If if my building permit comes through in the next like month, then we might be able to be like 
No furniture party in <laughs> Venice before we move nice. out. That could be a good time. Nice. Um, yeah, that'd be sweet. That's amazing. That's a bunch of events. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. And uh, Where exactly is San Mateo? I mean, I know it's like... It's on the peninsula, like five miles south of San Francisco. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. On the is water. It, is it? Oh, it's on the water side. Yeah, oh, yeah. rad. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Love so, um... Yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. Uh, that one, it's going to be big. We've already sold 200 car tickets. Usually, oh, really? um, zoom out, Zach. Where the fuck is that? Oh, so right. SFO's right up here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, it's by Hannah's old place. Cool. So usually we uh, expect to double what we've sold in tickets day of. Mm -hmm. So we've already sold 200 cars. We expect there to be another 200 sold before the day, and then probably 400 or so will show up day of. So maybe 800 to 1,000 cars. Oh, my God. That's so crazy. Fingers crossed. That'll be fun. Yeah. I think. And we've got room for it, so it's going to be sweet. Cool. That's uh, awesome. We've, uh, royalty. How can people support by buying merch now? Just go to your website. Yeah, are you I'm, selling merch right now? I'm the merch guy. Okay, so yeah, it's, go buy go, go buy, buy merch and support Radwood. <laughs> they they got they don't I don't can did you can you guys apply for a PPP loan? We did. Did you? Yeah, we got it. Oh, cool. Yeah, Good for we, you. We needed it. But we're yeah, good. Yeah, well, I mean, it was, you know. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we couldn't do a show for a year and a half. That's so, what it's for. Uh, we're, we're back, and we're, we've sold, sold tickets. We've got- Buy some swag. We had to pivot and do uh, Rad for Sale. Um, so we have the Oh, auction. yeah, didn't you have a code for something? I do, yeah. What's that? Uh, so Rad for Sale is our auction site for people who haven't heard about it. Um, it's obviously same uh, criteria as Radwood, 80 to 1999. And we've sold some good cars on there. We had the um, 944 Turbo Cup sold for almost like a record price. A it was lot grand. of money. Yeah. yeah. We sold oh, there a... There we go. 1995 Dodge Viper, 20K. We yeah. sold a uh, replica of the Top Gun Ninja, the <laughs> ZX900 nice. Ninja. Uh, that, was, that went for like way over valuation. So you know, whatever, whatever That's that awesome. means. That's awesome. Um, what was it? It was like seventy eight hundred bucks, <laughs> which That's a like lot for w- yeah for like a, a yeah. other than Top Gun, like I think, a whatever. Ninja. I think Haggerty valued it at like fifty eight hundred or Solid. something like that. Yeah, so that's it great. Went, went pretty good. Yeah, um, we're starting to really pick up uh, speed, and we've got a lot of good traffic every day. I actually bought those Design ninety wheels <laughs> for oh really yeah. for what by accident. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, these are going way too cheap." I'm gonna oh my put God, them in a bid. Lumina Euro 3.1, yeah, 1100 bucks, yeah. So many IROCs. You guys have a bunch of fucking Camaros. Yeah, on yeah. There. That's oh my God, that Goldwing. Yeah, I'd that like thing to was buy that bargain. Goldwing and take for two grand. Yeah, I'd like to buy that and take everything off it and yep. have like one of those naked Goldwings. So my idea for one of these is to fill the bags with batteries and put an electric motor in it. <laughs> Just oh see God. how see, see how many miles I can get out of it. I mean, yeah, wouldn't cool. it be like it would be like fifteen hundred pounds? Oh, probably. I mean, it's already fifteen hundred pounds. <laughs> oh my God! It's like having a heavy passenger. Yeah, I'm put, not sure I know three, what that's like either. But put three hundred wow. pounds of batteries in the back. It's like having a uh, you know big guy on the back. That's a good point, I guess. <laughs> I wouldn't ri- want to ride a motorcycle with me on the back. That's yeah, maybe that guy Jamie uh, did. Uh, Jamie, Jamie Robinson. Robinson. And it was nuts. Oh, that's that Reebok Turbo yeah. Cup Matt, rules. Matt, just get on the back. I'll take you for a little ride up in the canyons. Up and, and down. Uh, don't shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to poo. Uh, Crazy. It was just absurd. Crazy. But yeah, we have a, a code uh, for anybody who wants to list. You can list for free on Rad for Sale, 80 to 19.99, and the code is tubular. That's a good word. Tubular. Way to bring that back. Yeah. I appreciate you bringing back tubular. Giving it some effort. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Zach, are you writing that down? Zach is furiously typing on his iPhone. So the, we can uh, put that link in the The producer's the doing the producer's duties. He's doing a really he's good got job. Sometimes. Zach has to multitask. Like, yeah. He's switching video feeds. He's I couldn't do his job. Up. It's hard when I you think, have to be involved in the conversation. I think only Zach could do Zach's job. Exactly. He's a clutch player. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, that's uh, that's amazing. That's a whole year full of shit. Yeah, a bunch and I, of events. you know, started and well revived a website. Um, what are you doing? Still work at Jalopnik, <laughs> doing some freelance stuff for Auto Week. 
you Bro, know? the gig economy is strong with this one. <laughs> well, okay. Like, <laughs> you are like pure Literally, gig economy right now. Let's talk about Flat Sixes. Flatsixes.com. Um, I've written for this site for about eight years. It's all Porsche stuff. It, it started out as one guy's blog. It was just 993C4S.com because he had a 993C4S. That's probably a good website. I wonder what that's worth right now. I, bet it's I think it's bunch. still part of the the business. Oh, is it really? Yeah. yeah. And then it was Porsche Purist for a while. That I remember. Yeah. And Porsche said, mm, maybe don't <laughs> call it that. Maybe you can't <laughs> use a name with Porsche in it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. But they were a sponsor of ours, so we're like, oh, of course. Uh huh. We'll change whatever you want. No big deal. So that that worked out really well. You we've must been, call it Porsches are perfect. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> we've we've been flat sixes for I think like six years. And um, Porsche reimagined by flat sixes dot com. So, yeah, it's it's been really good. We obviously um, things have been very interesting with the site because the guy who started the site actually passed away two years ago. So his wife and I have been running it since then. Mm. And uh, at the beginning of the year, she said, you know, um, I don't really want to put any effort into my dead husband's company, so fair. You know, it was it was very like she's like I'd really like some ad <laughs> revenue, but I'd really like to not do anything. It, I think it was just she like look, I'm a, I'm kind of a Camaro person, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, she's definitely a Porsche. Quite person, frankly, but, uh, we didn't really get along on our automotive interests. I always said that the Cayman was the greatest Porsche ever made. <laughs> really, I, I've gravitated towards Subarus, and it should be flat fours now. Mm -hmm. So no, um. She, uh, you know, I imagine it, it was painful yeah. uh, dealing with... I don't mean to joke about this. Yeah. Well, I do, but I mean only yeah. in a really lighthearted way. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. one of the kindest people I've ever met. But anyway, so the beginning of this year, she said, you know, I've, I've, I've kind of reached my end with the site. Um, what do you want to do? Because uh, she was like, if you don't want to keep it going, I'll just let it ride and we'll, you know, stop investing in it and mm. just see what happens. And I was like, well, you know, I've I've invested a lot of time and effort into this site. I don't want to see it die. I want to, you know, keep the legacy of of what John started alive. And um, so I, I reached out to a couple of friends of mine uh, at uh, Rect Media, and uh, we brokered a deal to purchase the site. So now we own it. And um, Rect Media is Chad Kirchner. I don't know if you know him. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. And I then, didn't know uh, the company, but I know that name. And yeah. then uh, another guy who's um, big into IT stuff. So okay, he's cool. helping us run the back end and, and working on that. So uh, basically it's like five of us now where it was before it was just like two of us. Yeah. So we've got a bigger team and we're, we're dedicating some effort to, to rebuilding the, uh, the site and, and getting it back to where it needs to be. Nice. So all those advertisers who hit me up asking me to place links hit Brad up. Yeah. Do I don't that. play. I don't have any links to place. I don't have articles to place links on. Happy Hit Brad up. Place fucking links on his shit. <laughs> Mad links everywhere. Mad links. Amazon hyperlinks. Feedback. Yeah. Whatever the fuck. Yep. yep. That's awesome. I mean, are you enjoying like? Because you, it obviously takes a lot of like consistent blogging. Yeah. You know the fucking formula. Yeah. This yeah. Point. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, we're we're trying to do ten blogs a week on just Porsche, which is not easy. <laughs> Uh, you have to go back and find like old issues of like enthusiast magazines yeah. and just like redo the, all the yeah, all yeah, this yeah. info. This is what they thought of the 930 when it was new. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna head to eBay tonight. That's that's a good idea. I have go uh, look at the, <laughs> before, uh, the library in the hallway and see nice. if you get any ideas. Nice. People have given me lots of like weird air cooled books and stuff. But uh, but Rec Media started EV Pulse like um, almost a year ago now. And I was doing some freelance work with them. Uh, I had a <laughs> Chad called me and he was like, "Hey, um, what if I gave you an opinion column and you had carte blanche?" And I was like, "Yeah, okay, that sounds like a great idea, but it's actually really <laughs> you run hard. out of ideas real yeah, quick. Yeah, you do three stories and yeah. you go, now what? Yeah, Fuck. you run out of ideas real quick. Yeah, I, I kept hard. it going for a year." Um, and but anyway, so I'm about to struggle with this. I'm writing the GT3 for Road and Track, uh -huh. but I already wrote the GT3 for uh. Road and Track. <laughs> I wrote it for web, and now I'm writing for print. And yeah. it's, and the it, it, there are a couple very very subtle nuance mm -hmm. changes they want, mm -hmm. but I still but they don't want to reuse any of the copy. Mm -hmm. So I have to I have to write all the copy. The whole thing. And the yeah. only difference is like. 
it's got to be 300 words shorter. And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> so, like, uh, that actually makes it harder. Yeah. So I have to write the same thing for the same publication, do it differently, and How make it shorter. How many words I think it's only like 1,600. For me, that's My like, Harley review was 3,900. I read it. Whoa! <laughs> I read it this morning. It's long as fuck. It's, it's very detailed. It's long. And I tried when I read the, the when I wrote the, um, the Multistrada, it's, you know, when a bike has that much tech... You know, it's got a lot of tech that you would totally take for granted in a car that isn't even worth mentioning, pretty much. But in a bike, it's so extraordinary that it has this shit. Yeah. You know, if a car's got adaptive, a height adjustable air suspension, that's one sentence in a car. Yeah. On a motorcycle, that's like 700 words or something yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to describe to people what's going on well, here, you know? I mean, this is a brand new bike with a brand new motor with brand new every. I mean, <laughs> everything. from a company who's never built a bike like this before. Yeah. So it's like, I got to go all Put out in on this. Yeah. Now, the, the, yeah, yeah, thirty nine hundreds. Like, that's it's. I read it. It's a lot. It's very detailed. But and there's a lot to write. But yeah. you know, for, uh, like to keep it me, to go under two is is tough if you are, you know, descriptive. It took basically an entire day to write it. It took three days to ride the bike and an entire day to write about Holy it. Holy shit! I hope they paid you by the word. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you're pulling by the I have word a, on that. I have a really good contract. With is that you or is yeah, that that's, that's you? Oh yeah. yeah, I sent it. Nice air. I sent it. Yeah. There's another one further down where I got more air, but um, what more, are your, more what's your than that? Oh, sorry, go yeah. ahead. I'm it's a good looking kid. engine. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I actually, I said uh, there was a, a topic where I said, "Will it send?" <laughs> and. Yes, it will send. The um, what's your thoughts there on because uh, you're oh, doing yeah. so many miles on motorcycles and shit? Yeah. Do you fucking go Bluetooth headset? Yeah, you do. I do. All right. Yep. You don't. Do you, does it not? I've. I, I don't. I don't have any any thoughts on the, the policies or whatever mm -hmm. of it. But like, I've always been like, no, you need to hear everything yeah. around you at all times. But like, is that not really the case with these headsets? I think. Um, I think the wind noise is louder than the the headset. Yeah. So yeah. like you're you can still hear cars, you can still hear what's going on around you. I I mean if you don't crank it. Yeah. And I have um ones that are fitted to my helmet so they they're actually like further out than just like in your ear. Oh, I don't do okay. earbuds or anything like that. I it's it's a specific motorcycle setup. Did you try the radar cruise control yet on the motorcycle? No, the multi strata has radar cruise they, control. They invited me to Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> they invited me to ride the the V4S but I haven't had a chance to get there yet. I mean you should, but that yeah. radar cruise yeah, is yeah. like I mean, I'm sure it's good. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I, it didn't do anything. I used it for 30 seconds. It didn't do anything yeah. within that 30 seconds. It scared me. Right. But I was still like, I don't think I'm ready for this. <laughs> I I can see how, like, on a highway, a long highway ride, it would be very beneficial. Yeah. Like, if, I, if I'm going I-80 across the U.S., like, that's a sucky ride. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't really want anyone to control the brakes other than me. Yeah. So that does throw me for a loop, you yeah. know? Interesting but, stuff. Yeah, maybe I, I could try it. I mean, if you got cut off and it just like locked the brakes, I would only use the middle it. of nowhere. Like, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. even bother. Like, yeah, yeah. But, and in LA, I'm always, you know, lane splitting and yeah. stuff anyway. So, like the civilized world, right? Uh, we got a lot of questions from people. We got cool. if you're going to get in the super chat, do it in the next few minutes um, while we still have your attention. And Zach will C and P. And then make it the big <laughs> Hector Gonzalez says, "What do you guys think is the future for Alpha Romeo? Alpha Romeo? <clears throat> That's a dinner I made last tomato, night. Tomato. Alpha, Alpha Romeo. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, rigatoni, uh, alfalfa, and tomato. Okay. It's um, exciting, but when you make Romeo. it with the recipe every time, it's a little bit different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, sometimes you get halfway through eating it, and it's like, mm, this wasn't for me. <laughs> sometimes it's really a letdown. <laughs> Occasionally, it's fabulous. And you can't give it to anybody else. <laughs> Looks real when you photograph it on Instagram, though. It's everyone thinks it's the best shit yes, ever. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, the future, I mean, they're really, are they having trouble selling cars? I believe they are. Right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think Maserati has been doing okay with the Levante. I don't know. I don't see a lot of Levante. Really? I've seen a few. I mean, a few, yeah, but I do see a lot of Ghiblis, okay. actually. Yeah, that I makes think sense. Too. I think they're a good, they're like a gateway drug yeah, yeah. into... Uh, I think that's somebody who's cars. like, I want something European SUV, but I don't want a Macan because everyone on my street has a Macan. 
The Ghibli so, is like everyone. It's like I don't want a five series or I don't want like an A six. Yeah, they want an infinity. Is with that more the, Oh, that's the small that's sedan. The sedan. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, I never see these things. <laughs> I've, I, see, I see Stelvios around, and I see I see Julia's around. Yeah, I mean, I saw Julia yesterday with the the yellow big brakes. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the TI. But, yeah, yeah, it was cool. Lieberman will go to bat to the death for his Julia TI, but I mean, without product investment, like you know, all of these products are like kind of aging at this yeah. point. Like, well, uh, they FCA mentioned a Barth really update. A Barth is dead. I yeah. mean, well, not dead, dead, but there's they don't sell anything here right now. Yeah. The so, 500's gone. The 124 is gone. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Are but, they selling the X, the 500X? Are they selling any Fiats here right now? Fiat, I think, is selling the X and the, what's the other the one? The e? M? No, the, the L. E's the L. The L. L. The L is one of the ugliest vehicles that yes. you'll ever, ever the, see. Yeah, the E it's is really gone. really sad looking. All uh, 500's are gone. The E is gone. There's a new generation of E, but we're not getting it. Yeah. I would say the future's not strong yeah, for Fiat. No. Maybe Alpha. Might 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 survive, and Maserati will certainly be around for a while. Yeah. Maserati has this this long history of just circling the drain for a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have hang in their kitten posters everywhere, <laughs> and they managed to stay in. I mean, Hector. Uh, oh nope, sorry. Nick Hanscom says uh, Brad is a great Twitter follow. Yes, he is. Is it B? Are you BC Brownell? BC Brownell, BC Brownell, Brownell on, Twitter. on Twitter. Brad is a very good Twitter follow. Uh, happy you're doing. Oh yeah, happy you're doing <laughs> right after the FTR shenanigans. You wrote an article about uh, dropping a press bike on yeah. a press launch. That's got to be a fucking nightmare. This guy paid five bucks to call me out on the yes, internet. Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, no. Um, yeah, I I messed up. It, it's just the fact of the matter. I. I ran too wide in a corner and I bumped into a side of a mountain. Ooh, and uh, the Did bike you ride it out. I I possibly could have, but it broke the radiator. Oh, um, I was a little. I, I was winded. It it knocked the wind out of me. Um, but Is I had on a, dirt or on tarmac. It was on tarmac. Okay. Yeah. I, I I went in at maybe fifteen miles an hour or something like that. It wasn't a big hit. I had a sore shoulder for like four days. I had a scuffed knee, and that was basically the extent of it. And the bike was not rideable because the radiator was busted. How it, often? But it started. I got up and yeah. I, I, you know, I had that adrenaline rush of when you crash. It's like I don't want anybody to see me crash. So I picked up the bike and got it started again. And then it started spitting water. I was like, ah, uh, I got to admit this. Yeah, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> but then man. when you when you come down and you chill, you're like, oh yeah, I probably shouldn't have ridden away anyway because I don't know if I have like concussion. Or anything like that. Like, yeah. I could have been messed up. How often do bikes get hurt on press rides? Because it's definitely a not, riskier thing than a press drive. Not know? super often, but I've I've heard of it happening. And I know on press drives, people wreck cars occasionally. Not mm-hmm. super often, but right. occasionally. My learning curve on a motorcycle is definitely longer than it is on a, in a car. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I, yeah. Need, I really need... 20 miles, 30 miles mm-hmm. to really go, okay, Well, this so is where I'm comfortable. This day was really weird because it was like, okay, we're going to get on the bikes. We're going to go do an urban uh, photo stop. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like hurry up and wait. And then it was like, okay, we're going to ride this really fast road that has almost no corners. And um, then we're going to have you know a stop for water for two hours. Because they were like doing interviews or something, uh-huh. so they were conducting interviews with like the CEO of the company. Uh, I was like, I don't uh, need any of this. Yeah, yeah. I'll be okay. And then we went. They were like, okay, now it's time to go to the fun road. When we get to the fun road. It's like two in the afternoon. There's cars everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's busy as heck. And I get this like uh, red mist almost, where I'm just like, I've been so frustrated yeah. waiting around all day. I'm gonna hammer down. And I just went into it too yeah, hot, and like I, I was stuck behind traffic, and I passed the traffic, and I was like, "Oh, I got open road." I'm gonna I know exactly how that feels. And then just that so, sucks. Yeah, I've you know you get in LA, you get stuck in these traffic jams, and there's people around me who, after sitting this horrible traffic jam, will just accelerate to like 55, <laughs> and I'm like, "Are you not a half hour late for whatever the fuck you were going to? Like, come yeah. on, what, what you know?" So yeah, but so, I understand the red that mist. I make no excuses. Obviously, I screwed up, yeah. and that, I wrote about that in the thing. It was just, you know, I messed Glad up. Glad you're okay. Yeah, was, yeah, I'm fine. I, dude, I, I, you know that shit can happen to anybody. Yeah, and they say, you know, the the thing with bikes is that you 
there's two kinds of riders, people who have put one down and people who will put one down. Yeah. And the key is what gear you're wearing. So I was wearing good gear. And um, what gear you're in. And what gear you're in. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and hopefully nobody just pulled out in front of you at yeah. 120. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was wearing the right stuff, and I didn't hit that hard. It was just a minor fuck up. Yeah, that sucks. I'm glad you're okay. Yeah. And bike radiators can be certainly fixed. Yep. Uh, scouting for Zen is, says, I'm considering moving to L.A. Uh, for press fleet proximity. Uh, fucking compete with me, why don't you? I see. <laughs> I see. You can't Beca- sit with us. <laughs> uh, because of home prices, I'm looking at places in San Bernardino, Bakersfield, Crestline, and so on. Is that too far for the fleets? If you're talking about delivery, yeah. They will yeah. not deliver. San Ber- like, here. like, that's real far. Like, that's... That San Bernardino is where LA meets the desert. Mm-hmm. Like that's like most of the fleets are either by uh, they're along the 405. So either they're by LAX, they're between LAX and Long Beach mm-hmm. on the 405. So like not that you need to live on the west side, but I'm just letting you know that that's like two hours. You yeah. have to like yeah. Mike Amusio moved to uh, Big Bear. Who did he, Mike Amusio from? Oh Club yeah, Club, yeah. But he has to like he drives in to get a press car and then yeah. drives home. And so. it, yeah. And by the way, um, I forget whatever your name is, dude. If you're gonna go that far from like. I don't want to say civilization, but like if you're going to go to the edge of town, like go up in the mountains. Don't yep. don't go to Riverside. 100%. Like yeah. like yep. trust me. Or go or you know what? Like go south, like North County, San Diego, like Encinitas maybe or Oceanside or something God, like there's that. There's some great roads down there. There's too. good shit down oh. there. Yeah, there's good stuff down there, but but like you don't want to have to drive from the west to the east across Los Angeles. Like, that's a shitty drive. And yeah. so either go north to the mountains, you know, or south down to, to North County, San Diego. I wouldn't go. And Bakersfield is like a – that's a hard no. That's like a real – we don't, we, we really don't even stop in Bakersfield, honestly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's far, dude. Uh, Louis Correa says, I'm looking to buy an era, 80s era – CX500 or similar style of Japanese bike from the 80s. Any suggestions? Three to four thousand dollar budget. I have a CX500. You have a turbo. And the, the turbo. Yeah, the Is there turbo. a non turbo yeah. CX500 yeah, yeah, yeah. also? Oh, yeah. yeah, I have the turbo. It's parked in the lobby. Yeah. Um, Go to Rad for sale. Yeah. We've always got bikes for sale. Do you? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know that we have you know that right now, but um, I mean a yeah, Honda always... CB750 is a really nice bike. The mm-hmm. uh, nine, CB750 Nighthawk is that correct? And Nighthawk, yeah. I think. Um, uh, VFRs, a uh, VFR mm-hmm. 800 is a great bike. Um, I don't anything uh, from a major brand from that era is basically going to be pretty durable, pretty similar, pretty durable. I mean, Japanese brand, obviously. My um, turbo needs a proper refurb before being ridden. Mm-hmm. I didn't buy one that was like ready to be ridden, but mm-hmm. and it probably needs a couple thousand bucks to really be. Looks really nice though. It look, I, it's exactly what I bought it for yeah. to look at in yeah. the lobby every yeah. morning. It says turbo all over it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> <laughs> one day, I, I'll, eventually, I will get it fixed up and bring it to Radwood. But it just it just is a good display piece right yeah. now. Uh, Long Block wants to know: Has anyone got their hands on press cars for the new Z? No, the new nope. Z is not. Um, out yet that that yellow one that uh, everyone's taking pictures of is an engineering mule of some kind or I think just it does a, run right it runs but I think it's just a photo car it's yeah. definitely not no. a dynamic car um, nope still pretty early yeah. in that process this semiconductor thing might be a problem huh that's yeah an interesting question of where uh, where things are going to go because everything's delayed right now yeah like factories Even like are F-150s shut down and stuff now. yeah, yeah. If F 150s slowed down, you know it's messed up. <laughs> Nothing stops F 150 production. Zach was driving the F 150 hybrid. Yeah. Power Did boost. we even really talk about it in the show yesterday with Hannah? We mm. really glossed over it, didn't we? We had a lot of. Uh, we recapped our off road trip. About. <clears throat> um, should we t- do you want to talk about it now? Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's very impressive. I mean. I drove it for like 100 feet and it felt like a Prius. Uh, yeah, pretty much. You know, it cycles on and off with the EV motor, which is very quiet. Um, Doesn't it still use quite a lot of fuel? 
Uh, yeah, it's still. I think at best it gets, it gets like, 24 miles per gallon city and highway and combined. Okay. So that is at best, best, yeah, best. Yeah. Um, what did I, you get? I got 18 and a half on the whole thousand miles we did, but that's because we did so much downhill. Yeah. That it was doing regen braking mm. with the engine off for like every descent we did, which was cool. So I did a lot of silent off roading, nice. which I, I thought was pretty neat. That's I'm cool. into it. I'm yeah. very into EV off roading. Really, yeah. I, seems like a good. That's one of the idea. reasons why I want to test the 4xe. The, yeah, the Jeep. That sounds yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Just go the, the Rubicon like, it and all mm-hmm. in uh, in electric. It depends though on how strong that electric motor is. Like, yeah. can it move the vehicle over rocks or up a hill? Sure. Not really. It mm. was okay for flat stuff and downhill um, and downhill, of course, yeah. which was nice. Yeah. Because I think for offering, I either want to have the experience of like, it, it, if it's quiet, that's great, or it's going to be like V8 and let's go 100 miles an hour like trophy right. truck style. But if it's like, let's listen to a V6, help us climb over these rocks. It's kind of just whatever. Like mm-hmm. the exhaust note is not why I'm I'm there. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty rad that, that you could do that. I wish you could hit a switch to save the battery for when you got to camp. You know, because you can use that lithium ion battery pack like mm. as a power source in camp, but it decides. It doesn't when it's have a charge mode. Off. It doesn't. It doesn't have a like. Oh yeah, you, yeah. Store you need it. a you need a charge and store mode. That would be nice, mm-hmm. so that you can get to camp with a full battery pack right. and then run your shit silently without exactly. the truck. Yeah. Like when we were at camp, like the truck cycling on wasn't annoying. Like it's a pretty it certainly quiet was a pretty quiet engine. It was not that big of a deal, and it didn't come on like it wasn't constantly running by any means. But like, if you could pre-juice it, that would be nice. Yeah. Because we were cool. doing that in the van. You'd, you'd pr- pre-charge the battery, and then you have the engine running as little as possible. You know, when you get Exactly. That yeah. It would um, be very cool. But it's, I mean, the, the whole point of that, because there are other trucks that have hybrid systems also, and this is just a little more advanced one, but this runs the power to the bed mm. for the pro power thing. And that is kind of a game changer. And I asked people on my Instagram, I was like, people that actually you know, work with tools, like, because I don't. <laughs> you know, those of you who actually have skills and things, like, do, will you use this on a job site? And the response was, for large contracting jobs, probably not, because you're doing the work away from where you can park a vehicle. You'd have to run really long extension cords. Mm-hmm. But um, people that service race cars, do track support, or are, like, small home contractor or repairman, they're like, absolutely. And campering people. The comment I saw was really that into it. the people would get generators stolen from their truck. Yeah, bed. that guy's mm-hmm. like he did so, three stolen. Yeah. So this this gets rid of that problem. Yeah. So if you run because of course they do because every fucking decrepit RV in Venice has a fucking stolen <laughs> generator, <laughs> fucking bike chained yeah. to the back of it, dude. Yeah, the generator is worth more than the RV. You know, <laughs> yeah. Where did you get this thing? Yeah. Um, they're gonna sell a gazillion of them. They always do. But this thing was quieter on the highway than. Then the M4 we had, the Kia Telluride I had, like almost pick your luxury car we've had, and somehow they managed the wind. Oh, and was tire that what you said? I forget. My friend, else. my friend Brandon called me about a Kia Telluride, and I said I was just talking to Zach, and he just told me that the something something was better on the highway than the Kia Telluride. Was it this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, on a smooth road, oh, it's, it's way nice better. Yeah, he's not going to want an F150, but okay. No, no, no. But the, right. the Kia is pretty good, but yeah. it was like that was the only kind of downside about that car. But comfortable storage, all the things. Like it's it's not as nice inside as the Ram, but it's pretty fun. The Ram's nice. super cushy. Yeah, that's a cushy. And the Ram, truck. I think, looks a little more luxurious. This like just looks functional, but it's really good. Oh wow! Here we go. A million fewer cars will be built this quarter because Ford, GM, Stellantis, Toyota, VW, Honda, Nissan, and Subaru have lost production for lack of chips. Oh wow. wow. Guys, we're going to have to go into uh, a country that few people can pronounce and start getting uh, some rare earth metals. I mean, Elon will know what to do. We'll go yeah. we'll go well, to he's, Elon. He's the hero. He, he's, he's he's the guy he that's going to he's trying to save the earth, Matt. Right. Of course. From of course. Mars. From we Mars. need to we need right. to transition. He's trying to save it so hard that right. he's going to leave. I'll be right back. We need to transition from going to buy some cigarettes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'll be right back, kids. Yeah. I'm going to the store for smokes. <laughs> Why do you have a suitcase, Dad? <laughs> Why do you have a space suit, Dad? <laughs> no, no, don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. Um, oh, anything else? Uh, oh, what program do you use to manage your video setup with the phones? It's called SwitcherCast. It works most of the time. It works really well for all in-studio stuff, but they're Zoom-like 
call-in feature is kind of buggy, yeah. mm. which is a little annoying. But for in-studio, it works really, really good. Um, dude, flatsixes.com. Yes. Radwood and all the associated yes. Rad for Rad sale. Rad for sale. Uh, and Autopia then we've got Autopia 2099. 29, is that Autopia2099.com? Yeah. Yep. Fuck me. You have like, and you're Angel Opnick. Yep. And uh, one of the things that I was down here for was I'm doing a big piece for Auto Week on uh-huh. like the history of EV hot rodding. Oh, cool! So I went down to EV West. Of I went to a shop out. What'd in, you drive? Anything? Ah, uh, no. It was rainy and nasty. I was like, yeah, I'll just take some photos and drive the M3. I, they still it's have not that thing kicking a, around. They had it two years, three years ago. <clears throat> they might have had a problem with it. Uh, um, okay. It's at, it was at a body shop. Oh. And uh, the someone um, sent it too hard there. <laughs> <laughs> they they sure did, um, but it was at a body shop getting painted, and they left it out overnight, and it got rained on. And the carbon fiber hood has vents right over an electric motor. Oh and no! And it it burned. Oh no! no. Did it really? Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. It's gonna be repaired, <sighs> but it's in a bad situation right now. <laughs> that <laughs> sucks. sucks. Yeah, yeah. That's a oh, bummer. I like that was that a car. fun car. Yeah. Oh, well. It'll it'll get. He said he's going to build it back better than before. But it's yeah. It's maybe start yeah. with another E thirty six. Basically, the, well, this one's already got a cage, and uh, it's like. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, he said he he went and looked at it, and basically the uh, carbon fiber hood had shrink wrapped itself to everything uh, underneath because oh, wow. it just got hot and melted. Oh wow, that's crazy! Yeah. I bet you could make that into a coffee table. <laughs> Probably awesome, dude. That sucks. Engine block coffee table. Yeah, uh, electric EV motor version. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, they're they're doing a really really cool um, electric land speed record attempt uh-huh. this year, uh, so I'm kind of documenting that. And we talked to them. It's the it's the belly tanker thing, right? No, no, they've got a new. One. Oh no, it's well they they built a crazy thing. Yeah, they and, went and last they, year, right? And then they set they, they broke they hit a like record. Some markers, and now they're like really going yeah. for it. They have a new chassis, a new driver, a new everything. Jeez. Cool. Yeah, yeah, they're and nuts they're aiming for three fifty. <laughs> Their re- their last record was two twenty. They have three fifty. Sure, why not? That's good. That's he's awesome. Like, he's like the the class record was to kind of give us an opportunity to prove ourselves uh-huh. and like say you know you don't just show up to the salt. You of course. Know? <laughs> yeah. No. So <laughs> no one does shit the first year. Yeah. Yeah. I met those salt guys. They're out of their minds. So he he's like you know we showed up and they were already looking at us weird because we went. Um, we did our three test runs to get our license. Yeah, like 150, 180, yeah. 200, or whatever. And then our next two runs were setting a world record. <laughs> nice. um, so, and then our next two runs after that, we raised the record. That's the one cool that we just broke. Fuck. So that one uh, has the wheels outside of the the chassis. Yeah. This new one is like pencil. Oh, okay. It's like it's a different class, or is same it? class? Okay. Because in, is a class streamliner. Uh, SCTA has has three classes for EVs, and they're uh-huh. all based on weight. Uh, okay. So it doesn't matter what it is; it's just got to be under this weight. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, with lithium ion, you can easily do that now. Yeah, yeah. The so weight is they're heavy, just, so whatever. It's just stability is the only problem, right? So, but that would be the same if it wasn't EV. I mean, that yeah. that, that has nothing to do with it being EV. It's just like, can you build anything that will stay right. on the ground yes. at three hundred and fifty right. miles an hour? Right. So I'm really excited to see how this goes. He said that the success of last year has bought him a couple of years of of fucking around to figure <laughs> it out. Mm-hmm. So like if they don't win a record this year, he's not that worried about it. Like they'll they'll you know keep Fuck, going that's a couple so of years. Cool. But yeah, it's it's extremely cool, and it's just a Tesla motor. Just three hundred fifty. Yeah, one. Just one. Yeah, one. How many batteries? Uh, just enough to get you know three miles or whatever. So, so it's like. Yeah. Like two. Yeah. It's like not even like a it's lot a, of I mean you're you're putting a lot of juice through it, so it's a few, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's like it's maybe a like four hundred pound pack. Yeah. It's probably the wow. same like pack that I had in like that silly little Willie's Jeep thing I drove. Like just a small like thing. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. And the, and cool. it's space limited cool. is the problem. So right. they've got to like And cooling, right? The yeah. cooling's a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's cool, man. So yeah, I, w- I was down there for that and then I went to a shop out in Rancho Cucamonga. They're doing um Bus and uh, you know beetle. Buses swaps. make a lot of sense. Yeah, 
buses make a ton of sense. Yeah, because they look great. Yeah. The fucking powertrains are shit piled. You, you know, don't have to go fast. Like, yeah. Nobody expects you to go fast. Yeah, yeah. So you can just kind of like putt around, yeah. get really good mileage, you know. And not have to deal with a 30 horsepower, right. like terrible motor. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. So well, that'll be good times. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Radwood, Rad for Sale, Autopia 2099, Flat Sixes, Auto Week. <laughs> Jalopnik, um, EV Pulse. Fuck, uh, man, you have more credits than like. This dude's got the Marvel record, right now. the <laughs> fucking record for Flux. That's crazy. Hey, did we already talk about why uh, we were late today? We oh, no, we car. didn't. My car broke down. Because your car broke down. Yeah, my shitty old 912E that everyone knows me for, my, my loud yellow banana. Um, that I, exhaust is it's loud. Very loud. It's a lot. Yeah. It, it's super quiet in the car. Oh, I promise good. it is. <laughs> well, the whole yeah, it's all just let, going out the yeah, back. Yeah, in a Porsche, when the whole engine is behind the driver, the the volume doesn't come yeah. into the car. Like the that. only time that it's loud is when I'm next to a Jersey barrier and it's <laughs> reflecting into the car. Yes. Um, so it's not too bad. But uh, I I drove it down here from Reno last week for the Tycon thing, the uh, Harley thing. Going to all these site visits, visiting EV West down in fucking San Diego, <laughs> going out to Rancho Cucamonga. I mean, I've put a thousand miles on it in the last week. Oh my god! And uh, the points died out when I was up on Angeles Crest, so I had to buy some points and replace it, and it seemed to run fine. And then throughout the week, it just progressively got a little worse. And then I went for a drive this morning up ACH and back. And it was it was I running. I cannot believe with all the driving that you're doing, you're like driving more recreationally. But go, yeah. go on, yeah, yeah. I did two ACH runs, so, <laughs> and I drove the Taycan all the way out to Big Bear, and you know, oh yeah, yeah. You did the actual driver. We yeah. just stopped in the forest. It was fun. Forest. It was good. Yeah, it's nice I room. think I think it was indicative of what people are going to use that car for. Yeah, if I was doing writing and not making video, yeah. I would have done the whole drive route yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I drove it up up the hill this morning for uh, Good Vibes Breakfast Club, which was cool. Drove it down. It was driving better than it has in four or five days. Cars drive great downhill, yeah. usually. <laughs> well, up, even uphill. <laughs> even uphill, it was doing pretty well. We got down it to the city. It feels so powerful. It's, like, it's a 9% grade, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we got down to the city, and it was like... 89 degrees and all of a sudden it was missing and stumbling and kicking and bucking and I was like I'm just going to get it back to my stop and I'll I'll swap for a new set of points maybe it's just the points so I put a new set of points in it seemed to be running great I was on my way over here it was like I'm over in uh, by the airport it was like six miles or whatever to uh -huh. get here I got four miles into the six mile drive and just I was like 4,500 and third. Wah! And it just died. So I checked the points. They seem to be fine. I checked the ignition. I swapped the, um, the Do you coil. Do one of those modules under the seat? No. Okay. No. Uh, mine is uh, very dumb. <laughs> Because it, it's it's all you like have no modules. Yeah, there's just, one computer, and all it basically all it is is the distributor sends the computer a signal to fire each injector. Oh, okay, yeah, no, this has. That's I it. have another module that occasionally can take a crap. Yeah, that I'm instructed to keep a backup of in mm. in my glove box, which I do, but I don't think your car maybe has. No, that. it doesn't. <laughs> um, so, oh, so now what? Now you got to we got to go back there and find out what's wrong with it. Uh no I'm I I already called the shop oh, okay. I'm gonna AAA it to there great and I'm gonna fly home yay <laughs> solved you'll when, be luxurious yeah when you when you're an adult yeah. you can do stuff you like can't that just do that yeah <laughs> well that's cool man I mean you're so. fucking you gotta you gotta get some rest yeah this you week has been chill out a little bit a lot yeah well yeah I'll chill for two days and then go to San Francisco for two more press events the Holy irony shit. of this headline of yep. yours from 2017 yep. <laughs> sure beats flying <laughs> crossing the country in 76 and I 12 <laughs> yep that's <laughs> awesome uh, that was my that was my first like like breakout story that was on the cover 2017 of yeah. September 5th, yeah. 2017. That was uh, actually my current boss, Rory Carroll, gave me the cover of the magazine back nice. when they were still producing a magazine. Oh, they're not printing anymore, are they? Auto yes. Week's not. No. Yeah, yeah. It's only, um, it's only online, which is fine. Uh, all my stuff's online, basically. So, um, Natalie Neff is in charge over there now. She reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do some work for them. John Neff? Maybe. Oh, okay. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know who John Neff is. Oh, another person in our industry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Could be familial, but I'm not sure. It's an no, interesting I don't know. last name, so who knows. 
Um, thanks for coming down, man. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, it was again. a good time, aside uh, from my car breaking down. Aside from your car breaking down, but I'm still <laughs> glad you made it. I'm glad it broke down here and not halfway home yeah. on 395. On the middle of 395, yeah. 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 A little Lone Pine vacation. It's right, all good. Right. Oh, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, and you're in with Ben Benton can fix your shit up good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to I'm gonna hop it down there. Um, they were like, oh, well, we'll we won't be here when you, you get it here. I, I don't know if I if you want to leave it outside. And I was like, dude, it if somebody run. steals, <laughs> if somebody steals this, it's insured. Yeah, I'll be fine. You're like, I'll take the money. That's yeah. cool. So there'll be a 912e outside of Benton's tonight. <laughs> if you really want to steal it, but if you push it away, yeah. If you really, really want to steal it, it's got to be something in the ignition. It could be the computer. Mm. I don't know. He'll figure it out. He's a smart guy. I love John be Benton. Good. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah. We will talk thanks to you next me. week. Do we have a schedule right now? Uh, manual, manual Carrillo. Oh, yeah. And Crew Show. Okay, cool. Yeah. That'll be next Sweet. week. That will be fun. I love Manual. He's a good dude. Yeah, he mm-hmm. rules. Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye.